Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today we're going to be doing some watercoloring with these spring peonies and then um, the sentiment's going to be the Mr. and Mrs. Uh, set. It's the stamps and dies. So the spring peonies is not a new stamp set by any means. I think it's been out for a couple of years, but it's still one of my favorites. And you guys know that I am a big proponent of still getting mileage out of the stamp sets that you've already purchased. So if you have this wonderful play along, if you don't, maybe look into getting it because it is one of those stamp sets that's just like good for all kinds of occasions. So here I am working on watercolor paper. I prefer the Canson Monteval watercolor paper and I am stamping in old paper. Typically I would use um, Distress Ink antique linen, but I couldn't find it. So the old paper is close enough for government work and that's what I went with. So I'm stamping on the, right now it looks like the left and the right, but it's actually the top and the bottom of my card um, because I want, I thought originally, huh, I thought originally what I wanted was to have the flowers bordering the top and the bottom and then I was going to put the sentiment in the middle. Turns out I didn't really like that, so that's not what happened, um, but that's the game plan. This is super easy with the aid of a stamping tool. I prefer the original Misty um, or the any other of the Misties that they've come out, but I'm a Misty girl, that's what I use. Um, so here I've cut masks out because I'm gonna be creating kind of like a floral spray at the top and the bottom. And I wanna make sure I'm not stamping over what's already there. Even though Distress Inks do blend out pretty clean, I just didn't wanna risk there being any leaves that you could still see over my flowers or um, risk that I wouldn't be able to tell since I'm doing no line watercoloring that I wouldn't be able to tell what lines went where. So each time I'm doing this I'm just flipping my card back and forth um, making sure to move those masks and then that way I'm just stamping everything pretty much in the same place. Now you will see later on um, with some of the smaller stamps that I do kind of like switch that up a little bit um, just because I use the stamp more than one time. So uh, funny story, not really. I mean not funny haha, funny like of course that's my luck. Um, my allergies weren't bothering me at all today. I was totally fine, not snotty or sniffly or any of those things. And then right as I sat down to do this voiceover I sneezed like six times in a row. And now guess what folks, I'm totally snotty. Isn't that fun? Isn't that the best thing ever? That's sarcasm for those of you who cannot tell. Um, so anyway, I wanted you to see the whole process, just kind of how I got where I was going. Some of these leaf masks are a little bit flimsy because the leaves are a little bit more intricate, but I just kind of push and pull them where I need them to go. If one of the leaves had ripped off, like I would have still used it. I would have just used it separately from the rest of them. It would have been fine. I did choose to stamp... Um, different kinds of leaves. There's two different kinds of leaves that are included in the stamp set. I chose to stamp them both just because I like a lot of color variation and I think it just makes the whole spray more interesting. Uh, but you certainly would not have to do this. Basically it's your card so you make it pretty however you would like to make it pretty and I will make mine however I would like to make mine. So here's where you can see that I had to move one of the stamps just because I needed to fill in a little bit more on the other side. And since I moved one, I figured I might as well move the other one so I don't accidentally get ink on it. And then uh, I would just reposition them on the other set once I flip the card over. Um, yeah, so that's that. I think I'm pretty much going to skip ahead to, yeah, see I have already stamped the other side. And then it also has these little teeny tiny like berry in them. I guess they're berries. Um, and I'm going to add those too just because again I like the color variation. So I'm going to make these a different color than my um, actual flowers. And then just so that way there's a little bit of other colors mixed up in there. Now how did I pick my colors? How did I pick my colors? Um, actually they pick themselves. They pick themselves because this card is for my uh, brother-in-law and soon-to-be sister-in-law. Uh, Eric's brother is getting married in June. Stand by, we have to talk about the card. So I chose as my watercolor medium. I'm using the Hero Arts liquid watercolors. Um, any watercolor medium that you have will work for this. I just really hadn't used these in a long time and I wanted to kind of play around with them. It had been a while. 
here's how I like to watercolor. It's very controlled. Um, some people like a looser look and that's totally fine if that's what you're into. But I find that with watercolor, I like to have a lot more control. It, I'm just much more comfortable that way. Um, and it's a cleaner look, which you guys know I'm a fan of. So here I put down the color where I want it to be the darkest. I then rinse off my brush. I blot the base of my bristles so that the tip is still wet, but it's not overly saturated. And then I start at the edge of the petal and then I bring it down to the color and just kind of let it blend out. From there, I add in darker pigments um, as I go until I get the desired darkness that I'm looking for. You don't want to work next to um, another area that's wet. They'll bleed into each other. This is especially important with no line watercoloring because that line is what you set it as. So if you work in a bunch of, of neighboring petals and they blend into each other, you're just going to have a blob. You're not going to have any separation and it's not going to look like the image. Like it's not going to look like what it's supposed to look like. So... Eventually, I am going to speed this up. I'm only going to show you one side, like, because it's the same exact thing stamped on both sides. I do just want to make a note, because um, I didn't mention it earlier. The piece of paper that I'm working on is a six by four and a half. So it's a little bit bigger than an A2 size card. So I know I'm going to have to trim it down, um, but I'm totally okay with that. Like, I that doesn't bother me at all. I would rather have it a little bit bigger um, so that I have a little bit of playroom on the edges than to have it the exact size in case something goes wrong. So with the larger petals, you obviously are gonna need more um, water to get the pigment moving. And you're this is just something that I've kind of learned with practice. You're gonna have to play around with it. Um, there's just a lot of practice that goes into this. Not that you can't have a very pretty piece. If it's the first time that you're doing it, you certainly can. Um, but you will get better the more that you do it, just like with anything else. So a lot of times I am blotting off camera. You can't necessarily see it, uh, but it's just because right next to my left hand is where I have my paper towel and that's where I'm blotting at. Sometimes I don't need to blot because I've only picked up a minimal amount of water. Um, and again, that just comes with practice, knowing how much to pick up. But there are still plenty of times where I have to blot it off because I've picked up too much water. So if that's something that you have to do every time, don't feel like you're doing it incorrectly or you're not any good at it. Um, it just means that, you know, that time you picked up too much water and you got to blot it off and move on with your life. No big deal. So back to how the colors pick themselves. So his brother is getting married uh, in June to a wonderful girl named Mallory. And their wedding shower is actually tomorrow. So I painted this card, I don't know, probably last week. Um, and their wedding colors are a series of blues, um, more like muted blues. Uh, so that's why you can see as I'm going along here, I'm using the blue, but I'm also adding a little bit of purple. Later on, you'll see me add a little bit of pink. Again, I like color variation. <laughs> I like color variation. Um, so I am usually consistently uh, adding in other colors into my petals. You'll also see me go back over um, previous petals that I've done just to increase the intensity of the shadows until I'm happy with it. There's nothing wrong with that. You certainly can do that as many times as you need to. Or if you've gotten it too dark and you don't like it, then just wet it with clean water and blot it up with your paper towel. Watercolors are super forgiving. Um, even though they're time consuming, <laughs> they do take a while, um, but they are very forgiving. So she has a series of blues and um, with like gold accents. So that is basically what my game plan was heading into this and then just with a couple of other complementary colors a lot of her uh, florals have like that eucalyptus green um, which I really didn't love in the card so I kind of added a little bit of yellow and then I did the other ones in a little bit of teal but 
you know, it's not like it's going to be comparative to her actual wedding colors. It was just kind of like a tip my hat to because that's what I know her wedding colors are. Um, here I backed up the camera a little bit because some people like to see the palette. And so I wanted you to give the opportunity to see that. Please let me know um, in the comments below if you prefer to see the palette or if you prefer to see the painting up close. Later on, we are going to switch back to painting up close. Um, but again, if you're a person who likes to see the palette and see what colors are being picked up, I just really wanted you to be able to see both ways of doing it. Um, but I would be interested to know what's the, the more popular way. If you'd rather see the painting up close um, or have the palette included because I can't do both. Um, not with my current setup. So here, obviously, at this point, we've sped up the process moving much quicker, much quicker in now than I was before or that I was in real life. Um, and I will, I think for the most part, most of it's included. As we get a little closer to the end, you know, I'll show maybe one or two sets of leaves and then kind of just move on from there because we still do need to include the sentiment. Um, and trying to get all of it in there in a reasonable amount of time. You know, a lot of my videos are about 30 minutes long. Um, so for me, that is a reasonable amount of time. But I realize for a lot of you, you know, that's quite a bit of time to be spending watching uh, videos on the YouTube. So um, I tell you, so here, this is funny. You guys, <laughs> is your husband good with names? Or are you good with names? I try very hard to remember people's names, uh, especially like if we go to a restaurant, which now has been well over a year since we've been into a restaurant. But like I make a conscious effort to try to remember my server's name. Um, I think that it's nice to remember people's names and it helps them to feel like, you know, you're putting in an effort. My wonderful husband cannot remember people's names. His brother has been dating Mallory for as long as I have known him. Okay, they've been together years and years and years, y'all. Now, they're still very young, uh, so like no rush to, to get married or whatever. They're doing it in their own time. That's all good stuff. Um, but they've been together a very long time. He cannot remember, like when he talks about her in conversation for when like we were dating, he called her Melissa, he called her Megan, he called her Marissa. I'm like, her name is Mallory, bro. Like, what the what? The other day we were going to buy furniture. We have been in desperate need of furniture um, since we moved into this house. And it's been on the, like, to-do list to buy furniture. But then COVID and, you know, all that jazz happened. So... It kind of got pushed off and then we were going to go look at a place that was like an hour and a half away and that wasn't super convenient. So then enough time passed that basically we were like, okay, we're going to start back at square one and go to these other places. So we did. We went and looked at furniture um, that was a little bit more local and this guy, <laughs> this, as we walk in the door, this, obviously, this salesman, it's his job, greets us. Hi, is there anything I can help you with? Something specific you're looking for? And we're looking for lots of things, but we're not really interested in a ton of help. We would just like to walk around and see what they have. So we say, nope, we're good. We're just browsing. And he says, okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm James. If you need anything, please let me know. Okay, cool. So we go on about our merry way through the store of which Nathan played endlessly with the recliners, um, which we were not buying, PPS. And, and I kept having to be like, get out of the chair. Put the chair back how you found it. Get out of the chair. Put the chair back how you found it. It was super fun. Uh, as any parent can attest to that has taken their child into a furniture store. Um, so we're looking around, seeing if there's anything that we like. And then James comes back over and you know he's so he's making his second approach you know how sales is it is what it is and he is you know talking to us about some other sets or whatever blah 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 blah. and he will not stop talking guys he will, 
He will not stop talking. He is blocking the aisle way so that we cannot, we're basically being held hostage. Like we cannot move down the aisle way to move on to looking at the next piece of furniture because James is blocking up the aisle. So James gets distracted by something and he turns around and he's talking about this other couch and he has his back to us. And Eric leans over and whispers to me, Jeff needs to move it along because there's other furniture that we need to look at. And I go, his name is James. <laughs> Eric's name is James. And then he goes, fine, Jeff James needs to move it along <laughs> so that we can go look at this other furniture. And so I have to tell you, at the beginning of telling this story, I had to fight not to call him Jeff James because for the rest of the time that we were in the store or discussed it thereafter, the poor dude's name was Jeff James. Like, he cannot remember. He just can't remember people's names. And I don't understand why. Maybe if you have a, a if you are a person who suffers from this or if you... And I don't think it's malicious. I don't think he's intentionally trying not to remember people's names or he thinks these people are not worth remembering their names. I don't think it's anything like that. I think he just legitimately does not record these people's names in his head. So um, I would like to know if you if you suffer from the same plight as my husband, that you cannot remember people's names, um, if, like, what what goes on in your head? Like, how do you... How do you try to remember their names or don't like, or are you just like, oh, you know, whatever. My dad used to tell my mom all the time, like, if I introduce you to somebody and I don't introduce you, like, if I don't tell them your, like, if I don't tell you their name, it's because I don't know it. Like, so typically, you know, when you meet somebody, you use that as kind of like a lead in. Or if we're going somewhere and, like, I get the heads up, like, oh, I know that guy, but I don't know his name, then I have no issue being like, oh, hi, I'm Kelly, I'm Eric's wife. And then that will usually prompt the other person to then tell me their name. So then at least one of us knows their name, right? Um, or you do that, you introduce other people, um, you know, like, oh, this is my husband, Eric, in the hopes that the person will then return the favor. Oh, this is my wife, Susanna, and I am Jeff James. Lovely to meet you. You know, whatever. Um, so there's like ways to prompt people to tell them. Or worst case scenario, if I legitimately don't remember somebody's name, I will just tell them, I'm sorry I didn't catch your name. I'm sorry I cannot remember your name for the life of me. Like, I just take ownership of it. I don't... I don't know, I guess because I feel like, you know, everyone's normal really happens to everybody, but I really try to make a conscious choice to like log these people's names in my head or their significant other's names. Um, I, I just, <laughs> it's so funny to me that he cannot, even our neighbors, um, he like will meet them and then he, do they introduce themselves, the name goes one in and then out the other. The, when I used to live in the rental, the people who lived next to me, um, I don't, now I can't even remember her name because we've been calling her Sunflower for so long. I don't really even know if that's her name. I knew when she introduced herself, she had a very like um, 60s hippie vibe kind of name. Um, and then nobody could remember her name. Even me, I couldn't remember her name because her I didn't meet her. Her husband just told me her name. And, um, Eric started calling her Sunflower and that just stuck. Like, she's been Sunflower ever since. That's probably not her name, by the way. Not at all. So, back to the card. Here, everything is dry and I'm just going back in and putting in a couple of the details. I'm putting in the veins of the leaves. Um, you know, things that just would have kind of gotten lost. And this will really help to kind of bring your painting back to life. So, now I've done the top and the bottom. I told you that she had like some gold accents going on in her wedding. These are the glimmer, like metallic glimmers. They're also from Hero Arts. Um, they have a yellow or a yellow gold and a silver that come together. There's a bunch of other metallics too in other colors and they're really pretty. 
but I didn't want the bright yellow gold. I wanted more of like an old gold. So honestly, I just put a little drop of each of them and I mixed them together before I spattered them on my card. This spattering technique is not for everybody. You don't like it? Don't do it. It's cool. Uh, but I wanted to bring that in and kind of tie it in because I knew what my sentiment was going to look like. So I just kind of spattered that all over the painting. It did work down. It did work to tone down that yellow gold. Um, so once that was dry, um, then I went ahead and trimmed down. Now remember I told you that I knew I was going to have to do that um, because it was a little bit too big. I did not just take a quarter from one side and a quarter from the other side. I tried to pay attention to where it was going to be cutting it off. Um, so I trimmed a little from each side to make it more of a centered design. Now again, I told you I have a little bit of buyer's remorse for how I set up this particular card because how I thought I was going to do it is not how I did it. Um, and at the end of the day, I don't think that it looks terrible but I think that I did a lot of painting for no reason because there's one side of this that like is really just in the background and you can't see it at all. So I probably could have just done like a top f spray or a bottom spray and then put my sentiment on there and saved myself about, I don't know, an hour of my life. But that's not what happened and it's okay. The panel itself right now is super pretty. I trimmed it down and then I trimmed it down a little bit further than the A2 size because I decided I wanted to mount it um, on some navy uh, cardstock to again tie in my sentiment. This is some gold mirror cardstock from Tonic. Um, I'm going to use that to cut out the Mr. and Mrs. And then I'm going to use the navy to cut out like the shadow portion of the Mr. and Mrs. I'm also going to use the navy to heat emboss the stamped portion of it. So I'm just going to get all of these down. In the middle of this, I broke my first um, plate I've ever broken, like my die cutting plate. It just snapped right in half. Um, it's the first one I've ever broken in all of the years I've been crafting. Um, but nonetheless, I do have backups. So it wasn't like a totally devastating. I was still able to do it. But then somebody, who was it? I think it was Amanda from Pear Blossom Press, um, told me that she had the same thing happen and then she saved her half pieces for like partial die cutting. Isn't that brilliant? Such a smart cookie, that Amanda. Um, so here, this is after everything has been cut out. I'm just going to use that same piece of navy cardstock to do my heat embossing for my sentiment. And then I'm going to same as always, treat it with my anti-static bag. I'm going to stamp. This time, instead of stamping in Versamark, I chose to stamp in the Altenew. This is, I think, the antique gold. Um, because just in case, just, just in case, my gold embossing powder didn't stick all over to everything, um, then that way it wouldn't be, like, missing. It would still be gold in the background. So I'm using um, some gold embossing powder. I believe this one's from Hero Arts as well. And then I, since I don't have a container for this because I don't use it all the time, I just use a scrap piece of paper and then dump it back in. And then I'm going to heat set it. I always have my heat gun heating up uh, while I'm doing all of the other steps. It just eliminates a lot of warping on your cardstock, especially since most of the time when I'm doing heat embossing, it's to cut it into a label. So once that's done and it's all shiny, I got all my pieces, parts, I trim that down to my label size and I'm going to start assembling my card. So I'm just going to glue down the watercolor paper flat um, because I knew I was going to pop up my sentiment. So that's that the panels just framed, you know, with that navy cardstock. And then I started playing around with how I wanted it to look. Um, well, I probably did that and then cut it out, I'm going to be honest. Um, and I knew that I didn't love the way that it looked in the middle. So I'm going to build all my little pieces parts here. I'm going to put the gold on top of the navy. And then um, once everything is built, I'm going to pop all of that up on foam. I don't know if I even... Did I show you what it looked like in the middle? I may not have. Um, it wasn't good. It just didn't look right. The congratulations looked weird. Um, and I think the sentiment was just too wide for the amount of 
space that I had in the middle, um, which is why I opted to put it more in like the bottom left or bottom right quadrant. Um, it just seemed to work a lot better that way. But that whole bottom portion that I painted was obviously like I could have just not painted it. I could have just left it at the top or the bottom, you know what I mean? Done one or the other and it would have been fine. But nonetheless, here we are. It was good practice. So once I figure out where I'm going to be happy with how it is, I'm just going to peel off those foam uh, backing strips and then adhere everything down. Uh, the last thing that I did was um, Honeybee has lots of packages of really great little gems and drops and things like that. And one of them has, I don't remember the name of the one I used, I apologize, um, but I will link it below. Uh, it has a lot of metallics in it. And so I chose that one. They had a more subdued gold in there um, that just kind of matched with my whole theme I had going on. And then I just used that to accent um, the sentiment. This The metallics are always super hard to photograph. And so the photo isn't great. Uh, but in real life, it's super pretty. <laughs> um, so hopefully Mallory, not Megan, Melissa, or Marissa, uh, enjoys her card. And I hope you guys learned a little something. So thank you guys so much for joining me. And I will catch you in the next video. Bye.